Hello and welcome to the Movie Thoughts Podcast. I am your host, Dominic Tarnamella. And as you can hear in the background, if you don't hear the whip, I hate snakes. This is an Indiana Jones-centric episode. And uh, yeah, because Dial uh, of Destiny, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is coming out next week. And what better time to revisit the classic Indiana Jones films, the four Indiana Jones films. Now, some people like to pretend there's just three Indiana Jones films. There's four Indiana Jones films. Love them or hate them, whichever ones you don't like. Specifically, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We'll get to it. But because this is, uh, you know, the fifth Indiana, Indiana Jones movies coming out, Harrison Ford's what? 80, 80 something years old. How old is Harrison Ford now? Let's let's just double check so I'm not exaggerating. Harrison Ford at the time of this movie's release is eighty years old. Okay. Um Dial of Destiny, uh, as I said, coming out next week. I'm a big Indiana Jones fan, as you could tell. Um uh, I'm wearing my Fedora cap right now and I'm 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 fully dressed in the Indiana Jones getup. And It's been getting some lukewarm reception. If you look around, not that I take reviews that seriously and stuff like that, but it's been getting some lukewarm stuff. I'm going to go, I'm going to judge it myself, right? we got James Mangold directing it. Uh, He's done movies like Logan, obviously. Uh, You know, the last, what are we, the Ford versus Ferrari. He's done a slew of movies, and he's a great director, and I have faith in James Mangold. So hopefully, I'm pleasantly surprised. But as it is the fifth and final Indiana Jones movie because let's face it, it's the it's the final movie. I mean, you could have said that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was the final, but this one, especially with Harrison Ford's age, you know the the time, the limitations. Listen, they're de aging him in this one for a nice chunk of this one, apparently, because you know this guy's old. What is he going to do? He can't run around. He can't roll in the dirt and shit like that and be crawling into tombs forever, right? So he's hanging up the whip. He's hanging up the hat. Uh, Disney is obviously distributing this one now. But so as it is the last one, I figured like let's let's drag this out a little bit. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark today. I'm gonna talk about the first one in the series, and then hopefully I'm gonna try to do the other three. I can't guarantee that I'll actually get them done. In the next week, but I'm going to try to do uh, the next three. But yeah, I just rewatched Raiders of the Lost Ark, and what is not to love about this film, right? I mean, 1981 is the year it's released. It's directed by Steven Spielberg. It's written by Lawrence Kasdan, who, uh, you know, obviously co-wrote, or I, he co-wrote Empire Strikes Back, and he also co-wrote, I believe, Return of the Jedi, uh, they also brought him back to do um, The Force Awakens, and he was also involved with his son in the Han Solo film, which doesn't get enough respect. Kind of feels a little bit Indiana Jones-esque at time. But yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the introduction to the character uh, of Indiana Jones. You know, um, Harrison Ford, fucking charming as fuck. I mean, this is like, this is what cements Harrison Ford as a movie star. You know, he does... You know, movies like American Graffiti, uh, you know, he popped up, it, obviously, as Han Solo, you know, having this iconic character. And then when he does Indiana Jones, this this cements it, right? This cements Harrison Ford as the, the lovable fucking movie star that we all know and love, right? Because after this, then it's just, I mean, then he does Blade Runner after this. He comes back in Return of the Jedi. He does another Indiana Jones. And then it's that's it. Then the movies just start, and he becomes his household name, right? Uh, started as a carpenter, apparently, Harrison Ford. So he he turned to acting. You know, he, he was a regular working guy. And he, he became this famous fucking actor. But Indiana Jones, an iconic character that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg came up with. I think they wanted to do, like, a James Bond movie. Uh, they were both, like, James Bond fans, and... Instead of doing that, they came up with their own character, right? And this is back in the day. This movie was just called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nowadays, uh, I mean, actually, they've gotten a little better in recent years. They started just calling it Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I remember when it came out on DVD in the early 2000s, like the box sets and stuff, 
they they retitled the first one Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like that was on a lot of the covers, which I don't like it. I want it to be. I think I even have an older Blu-ray that says Indiana Jones. I got to double check that, but I, I'm looking at them from a distance right now. Uh, that says Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it's not. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark because at this point, Indiana Jones wasn't the household name, uh, you know, that he would become, and and later sequels he would have the title, right? Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and of course, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But this movie uh, is just so much fun. So much fun as far as just like action, nonstop action, uh, a nice amount of humor, you know, some scary stuff in there. I mean, this was 81, as I said, um, and and they could get away with a lot of shit, right? For This movie was ra- originally rated PG, there's definitely some, you know, action, some violence here. There's some scary stuff that happens at the end. We know what it is. But overall, just a fun movie. Uh, just, as I said, nonstop action just keeps going. And that's one of the things that uh, never ceases to amaze me when I rewatch this movie because of how, like, you get your story. Obviously, you're getting your dialogue. But there's just scene after scene of, like, right when, you know they get all that stuff out of the way, there's another scene of action. There's another scene of action. There's another scene of action. And it's 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 relentless in that way. And that's the great thing about Indiana Jones, right? Like, there's not a lot of movies that, you know, there's plenty of action movies and adventure movies, but not a lot of movies that just do it so well. Uh, you know, obviously they were basing it on, like, serials of their time that Lucas and Spielberg and Kasdan all knew. So, like, it takes a lot from that with the action, but a lot of, like, happy accidents in there, too. I mean, there's the classic sword scene uh, where the swordsman throwing his fucking sword around and Indiana Jones pulls out his gun and shoots him, right? That, if legend is true, was because Harrison Ford was sick that day and there was supposed to be, like, this big fight scene. And Harrison Ford, I don't know if he ate something or he drank something that got him sick. He had the shits. I don't know what the case was. But he literally was like, got the idea of like, pull out the gun and and shoot them. And it's fucking, it it works so well. It's like such a classic scene. It's still funny to this day. Um, But yeah, also great supporting cast in this movie. I mean, let's talk about him, right? Let's talk about the... Indiana Jones cast. You get Karen Allen as Marion, and she's great. She later returns in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. There's also rumors that she's in the fucking new one, I'm sure. To some degree, she's probably in it. Uh, We'll see. Uh, But she's great. You know, they kind of listen. Some people knock it now. They kind of make it like, oh, this relationship of uh, Indiana Jones and and, and Marion... Is something going on there where maybe she was too young. She even refers at one point where she's like, oh, I was a child and stuff like that. And, you know, he was a teacher, professor. So maybe it's a little weird. But, all right, first of all, let me get this out of the way. It's a fucking movie. That's, first of all, these characters don't exist, right? Not that I condone underage, you know, uh, the shenanigans of that nature. And, 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 and you know, what's wrong nowadays is wrong, uh, you know, even like a teacher, I don't even know why I'm getting into this, because yet again, these are fictional characters, but let's, let's just stop it, because this movie, first of all, not only is it from the 80s, but it's set in 1936, so like, whatever went down with Indiana Jones and Mary, and I, th- th- those were different fucking times, I don't think we should really get lost in there, and you know, start calling Indiana Jones a fucking pervert or anything like that, whatever. But that's neither here nor there. I don't know why I had to go on that tangent. Then you get Paul Freeman as Belloc, who's just a fucking... You want to punch him in the fucking head, right? Great villain. Uh, gets his gets his just desserts later on. Uh, but he plays a good role. There's also the scene of him swallowing the fly halfway through. Uh, but towards the end of the movie, uh, you know, I don't know. He's when When Indiana Jones has the bazooka or the grenade launch or whatever you want to call it pulled on them when he's going to blow up the ark. And you see a fly go into his mouth. And I don't know. Is it is it is it editing? Did he really swallow that fly? Then you get fucking John Ray's Davies as Sala, who's fucking great. 
I mean, you, you gotta love Sala. Such a great character, and this actor's so great. Obviously, he's been in the Lord of the Rings movies, too. He's He returned in um, The Last Crusade, and he's popping up again in this newest one. So I'm excited for that, because he was not in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, so he had that lacking, uh, you know, Sala. But then you get Ronald Lacey as Tot, and he's just a fucking Nazi guy, and he burns his hand, and all this classic imagery... And yeah, this is an all-star cast, man. This is a fun movie right from the beginning. Obviously, you know, it's, it's become so the imagery of this movie, even if you haven't seen Indiana Jones, which I don't know what the fuck you're doing if you haven't seen any of the Indiana Joneses, but like, you know these images, right? You know him running away from the big boulder in the beginning of the movie. Uh, if you've been to the fucking Disney uh, stunt show of Indiana Jones, it's been going, I think it's still going on. The last time I was there, I think it was still going on. But I love that fucking thing. They have the boulder rolling and stuff like that. It's just fun. It's just fun. I wish I could get a job in the Indiana Jones stunt show and be uh, a chubby Italian Indiana Jones. I would definitely get crushed by the ball more than once. But <laughs> then you get, listen, if you watch this movie closely in the very beginning, you get an appearance by Alfred Molina. Fucking Doc Ock himself in one of his first roles. He gets covered in spiders at one point. I think I watched an interview with him talking about that. Those are real, real spiders. And that's the thing with this movie. Practical fucking effects. They're beautiful. Uh, just the, 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 you know, it's, it, listen, I get it nowadays, you know, especially with a, a lot of this stuff. They film it, uh, you know, on a green screen. Or now this new thing, what is it called? The fucking, I'm forgetting what it's called whatever the thing that like Mandalorian uses and stuff like that where the backgrounds they put you in any setting it's all great it's all cool but there's something that I feel like your eyes notice right when you're watching stuff like this and you see what is it called the volume or something like that it's called whatever the hell it's called you see when something's really not there and this is the type of movie where it's all sets man like even that scene in the beginning when he's when he's taking the golden idol and, and the fucking ball comes like it's, this is all sets that are built on stages and everything looks great everything looks lived in and really looks like a tomb and it's just great and there's always that feeling as i said like the action is just non-stop there's always that feeling of like oh he's safe oh my god he's in danger oh my god he's safe oh my god he's in danger there's constantly you know whether it's as I said, the beginning, fucking, he, he, the Doc Ock over there takes his fucking whip and throws it away. Just great. Great stuff. Nonstop action. And of course, the fucking ending, right? I mean, spoilers, but the fucking Ark of Covenant, uh, you know, they're trying to get it. They're having this kind of tug of war back and forth. And finally, the Nazis, the bad guys, Belloc, they end up with the Ark of the Covenant and they fucking open that shit. And it's fucked up what happens. Effects that, listen, they're a little dated now. Um, you know, they're not perfect, but they, they still fucking hold up. They still hold up. For 1981, uh, I would take this and these kind of effects any day versus just computer stuff. And then, listen, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, CGI and shit like that. Shit. CGI is great. CGI, especially when it's done right, it's amazing. My problem with CGI is just, like, they overdo it sometimes where they don't use any practical stuff. Like, yeah, if you did this scene over today and you used a lot of the practical elements, but then you used, you know, some of the CGI stuff to maybe show some of the ghosts and the and the magic flying around, that will work. But that's not how they do it. They would just fucking overdo the CGI. But this scene, just the practical effects, the fucking, it's creepy still. Even when the ghost comes, it's like, like I said, it looks a little cheesy at times, but it's still creepy. The light shooting out of everybody's eyes and, and the fucking face melting. You can't beat that. The face melting, Belog's head exploding, uh, but the Nazi's face melting is classic. It's like a fucking, I was watching how they did that. I don't know if they recreated it on something. I gotta go through the bonus features. On the on the Blu-ray and 4K or whatever, uh, because they I definitely watched something where they recreated the head melting scene, which is fucking awesome. I also saw there's like a candle you could get. I don't think it's officially released, but like somebody maybe on Etsy or something sells a candle of the guy's face, and you could like it melts. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I just love this movie. A lot of fun. Um, just a great debut for the Indiana Jones character. And listen, like I wish. There was as many 
Indiana Jones movies as there was like James Bond movies. But unfortunately, it didn't work out like that, right? You had a big gap in between uh, The Last Crusade and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Because I think we were pretty much done. I mean, that was really... The trilogy was done for a long time. When was Last Crusade? Last Crusade was in 89. And then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was in like... If I had to guess off the top of my head. Let me just check it because I got it all pulled up. 2008. So you had a big fucking gap. Um, you know, where you didn't get Indiana Jones. Obviously you had the young Indiana Jones stuff. Which I- I'm not really going to get into. I mean... Some of it's good, some of it's better than others. There's an episode where Harrison Ford actually pops up as Indiana Jones. It's pretty cool. If I'll ever talk about any of that show, I'll probably talk about that episode. But yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, man. Fucking classic. Uh, just relentless. You know, the the helicopter scene with the when he's fighting the big guy. It just goes on, goes on, goes on. Just builds suspense. Like, perfect. Like, if every action adventure movie could be like this. It's, it's what every action movie tries to be uh you know just with a great pace what is it like just, i think it's like just under two hours raiders of the lost ark and it's a lot of fun there's also a lot of indiana jones toys coming out now which i may or may not have purchased most of them yeah they're in my apartment yeah i'm looking at some of them right now they're great it's harrison ford who doesn't want fucking harrison ford in an action figure in multiple kinds of action figures han solo uh, maybe Deckard from Blade Runner, and and now Indiana Jones. It's just great. Complete the circle, right? <laughs> A bunch of stuff. But yeah, Steven Spielberg, really, this is when Steven Spielberg, too, like, you could go um, and say Steven Spielberg's, like, overrated or whatever, but this guy, as a fucking director, is so versatile. I mean, like, and, you know, he branched out, obviously, over the years, and he ended up doing, like, Schindler's List because he didn't want to, like, be known as just like this popcorn kind of movie maker so he did his year but he could do anything steven spielberg i mean from indiana jones jaws et uh just a slew of his newer movies you know even he just he just does a great fucking job i mean anything he does he could do comedy he could do more serious things he's just such a great filmmaker uh you know his newest film the fablemans which was you know based on his life uh, is good as well. You know, he could do something like that, a little more sentimental. Gotta love him. Gotta love Steven Spielberg. Gotta love Indiana Jones. But yeah, I'm fucking sad that, you know, Harrison Ford, this this will probably be his last. Uh, as far as Dial of Destiny goes, I'm going to be seeing it next week. So I'm definitely going to do more of these episodes. As I said, I'm going to try to get through all four. It's kind of going to be a shorter little episode, trying a little something different. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna just talk about them all together, uh, but I said, you know what? Let me just do a little, little kind of like twenty-minute episodes where I talk about the each film and how I feel about them. As far as Raiders of the Lost Ark, though, probably is it the best in the series? That's the question. Um, we'll do a little bit of a ranking too. I'm not gonna say that this is my favorite in the series. This is probably my second favorite. We'll we'll leave it at that. And as we go on, we'll talk about the others. But Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, fun time to revisit it. You know, uh, just great. This is, I mean, all four uh, that we're going to talk about, obviously directed by Steven Spielberg. So now the, the odd man out is now this newest one which uh, James Mangold's directing, so it's a little bit different, you know, it's a little bit different, we didn't get Spielberg, I'm surprised Spielberg didn't do this, especially how, like, this is gonna be the final one, but I guess, you know what, he probably looks at it, like, listen, I got a lot of fucking backlash for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he's probably like, fuck you all, fuck you all, let somebody else take it, my my name's still on the credits, still my character with George Lucas, and, uh, yeah, we'll see, I don't know, we'll see, is there a future, I mean, is there a future for Indiana Jones outside, of Harrison Ford, who fucking knows, but yeah, that's pretty much the episode, can't stress it enough, if you've never seen this movie, definitely check it out, I'm excited to uh, delve into Dial uh, of Destiny, the the Dial of Destiny, rather, next week, Mads Mikkelsen, all that fun stuff, Uh, but we'll see, I'm gonna get to, I'll do Temple of Doom next, maybe have that out by like Sunday or something like that, and then we'll we'll try to do the other two, that's what we're doing. 
But yeah, that's the podcast. Check out the other episodes. Uh, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Dom Solo Reels. If you like the podcast and this is the first time you're listening, uh, you know, subscribe, rate, review, all that shit. I don't know. I think I might be back later. Um, depending upon when I drop it, I guess. With I'm gonna go check out that Asteroid City, uh, the Wes Anderson movie. I'm gonna try to check it out later. So that will be posted soon as well. And I guess that's it. Have a good day.